Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley. This is the fourth North Yorkshire church I've done in these videos. This is the church of St. Peter and St. Felix, Kirby Hill. Kirby, of course, being derived from Kirk Church. So it's Church Hill would be in Southern English, but because we're up north in North Yorkshire, it's Kirby Hill. And this church is, it has Norman origins, but it's most noted for the fact that in the 14th century, late 14th century, the rector here was a man by the name of Robert Wycliffe. Robert Wycliffe had a more famous brother who was called John, who of course is the Wycliffe, the man for whom Wycliffe Bible translators are the name, the man who superintends a translation of the Bible into the English of the day, and also a man who rebels against the medieval Catholic Church and the papacy and its pretensions about England. So this is, now we don't know what Robert Wycliffe's opinions were. We don't know whether Robert Wycliffe agreed with his brother John or not. Wycliffe itself is a little village, it's not very far from here, just down the hill, across the valley. So here we are, Robert Wycliffe's church at Kirby Hill. So have a look around the inside and then as usual go around the outside and see what the weather's doing. This is North Yorkshire, it rains a lot here. So Kirby Hill as usual of course we start, we start at the west, we're in front of the tower screen, we'll see that in a minute. And the first thing we see is the font. Now the font is 12th century, so this is certainly something that Robert Wycliffe saw if his brother John ever came here, which he probably did because the family home is nearby, then um, it's very common, it's very probable that he would have seen it too. The 14th century arcades, so it was, would have been quite posh and modern in the, those days. You can just see a bit of 13th century work at the east end there. And as we go, and obviously you get Victorian restoration, so you've got all these nice Victorian pews, um, nice yeah, plain glass, so I mean, to some extent it's kind of, yes, this is the sort of thing that I suspect Wycliffe would have approved of. And here we have France's beloved wife of the Reverend Thomas Holm of Kirby Hill, who died March 8th, 18, I think it says 31, aged 35 years. Nice bit of 17th century up there. Um, trying to see if I can see whose it is. I think it's a that this it may be a uh, Wycliffe related. Certainly, the local family. Say they are were a local family. Pulpit looks early 20th century by the look of it. Um, we've got here and there. You can see the screen, a little organ, and behind that is the tower, which is uh, um, vaulted. Chancel screen, so not that low church, but at least the naves all plain windows and pl wall plaster. Wall plaster is good, wall plaster works. And here we have a uh, uh, memory of Thomas Wycliffe, Esquire of Richmond, last male descendant of the family, which in the 14th century produced the reformer Wycliffe. The affection of his surviving sisters Lucy and Catherine erected this monument. So this is the last of the line of John. Wycliffe. Of course, John Wycliffe had no children. He was a celibate priest in the period. There's the priest's the vestry door, and that again looks 14th century. That's where Robert Wycliffe would have gone in and out. And the little window there. You can see this is a surviving Norman window. And then below we've got that squint, which would have allowed the priest to see the altar. Fairly nondescript stained glass. Again, quite normal. Um, the panelling here is 20th century furnishings of this sanctuary dedicated to the glory of God, the loved and radiant memory of Michael and Sheila Jeffrey of Ravensworth Park, who went on together June the 5th, 1858, he in his 34th year, she in her 30th year, which suggests that they were killed in an accident, because how else would the two of them have gone on together? Quite simple furnishings, nice piscina again. This piscina would have been seen by, oops, by Robert Wycliffe. Um, and there we have, again, that stained glass. It's, it's fairly sandy, it's, it's not bad, but it's just standard, really. And looking at west, 
this isn't one of those churches that's really exciting. The last few had done, videos I've done here, the last York, North Yorkshire videos are interesting in their own right. This is really very much the, the Wycliffe connection. But you look at that whacking great tower arch and the, the tower beyond. And yes, that opening in the middle is for the organist to see through. He's hidden behind there. We haven't quite got some... High Church, High Anglicans thought it was inappropriate for female organists to be seen, but here, because at the back, so the organist is kind of shut up and trapped in the tower. And here again, we have uh, aisle here, you've got uh, St. John the Baptist and uh, Christ. A uh, little bit of High Church stuff, but. Um, John Dakin, rector of this church, um, and uh, revered father of William Knight, uh, arch uh, deacon of uh, Richmond, etc. So, again, another former rector here. Old cupboard at the back there. Um, this is quite a solid piece, and uh, the Dakin plaque says, John Dakin wrecked this church, the divine reverend father, and of the divine reverend father, divine theologian in this case, Father William Knight, once Archdeacon of Richmond, afterwards Bishop of Bath and Wells, one of the executors of the goods of the aforesaid bishop, first founded a charity school and provided the first schoolmaster, assistant teachers, and four poor persons, uh, provided for them. Undertook to make a perpetual grant for its upkeep. So there was a charity school here. We'll see it actually on the outside. It's not, not open anymore. The, I, I believe the... Um, endowment has passed to a, a school down the hill in Ravensworth which is the actual village and this is not the village this is the, the church on the hill and you can see here well, just as we go around some evidence of things that used to be here that aren't here anymore um, particularly draw attention to this pillar here where you've got uh, and rather obvious I just have to be careful here they've got some hot pipes uh, you can see a rather obvious cut there in the capital and that indicates that there was something there once it's not anymore and there we have the surviving 13th century um column there clustered column there and you can just see again it's, it's been pulled about a bit which is typical of these um, medieval churches even somewhere like this and it is it's interesting as the Wycliffe connection really is what brings or should bring people here and then we have the War Memorial, and again, as usual, you've got far more names on the First World War than on the Second, because it was that much more traumatic for European people, the First World War, and not um, particularly English and French, whereas, of course, in the, the US, and that's another thing just to notice, that you'll notice that the Chancel Arch leans outwards somewhat. I suspect it's got something to do with when they did things, when they inserted it into what must be, would have been a Norman chancel with a much smaller arch. Someone made a mistake. That's what happens when you alter buildings. So that's the insight. Here. Yeah, as I was saying about the um, yeah, first, uh, first World War, it's much more traumatic for British people. Uh, yeah, French have just had the, their own experience of the Second World War being beaten, conquered, and occupied, which was incredibly, incredibly... Um, traumatic. But in terms of numbers killed outside of those killed in the Holocaust, in Europe, the First World War, more people are killed in battle than the Second. Whereas, of course, in the US, because the US comes in quite late in the war, then it's different. So that's the inside of the church here at Kirby Hill. So here we are outside of Kirby Hill. As I say, this is a 12th century building originally. It's been enlarged in the 13th and 14th centuries, and the 15th century has given us the tower, the West Tower that we see today. So we'll go around the outside and point out various things, including the school. Now, it's now in private hands, so you can't look at the inside, but the outside just abuts onto the churchyard, so that's fine. Well, the 12th century work can particularly be seen in the chancel, you can see there the corbel table and the remains of a 12th century doorway. There's that uh, 15th century tower. Again, there, there was a castle, there's ruins of a castle in the valley at Ravensworth below. So it's quite a, a smart, posh area. Uh, 
posh building because you've got a posh family here and the Whitcliffs are quite a posh family themselves and John Whitcliffe there's a reason why he's able to survive as he does and it's he has connections you need connections to survive um, so here we are around the back and you can see there's the, the vestry and it's quite a significant vestry it looks like it would have perhaps been a, a medieval chapel which would explain of course the squint and you can see there's a, a perhaps a little bit of um, Norman masonry has been incorporated in there uh, that perhaps shouldn't have been. So here we are up along the top of Kirby Hill and get a wonderful view over towards Wycliffe and over towards um, uh, the, the, the valley, over towards the A66. Um, get your kicks on the A66, perhaps not. Um, England's Route 66 almost. So there we are, north side, obviously the sun over it at the moment. Um, love, but it's a lovely, lovely um, setting. Church on a Hill, it's, uh, it's known as Richmondshire's Church on the Hill. Richmondshire's isn't a, isn't a formal county, but it's kind of an informal one. And uh, down there somewhere is, uh, well, that's no, down there directly. That is Ravensworth. That is the village, uh, really. The, and there's a little settlement up here on the hill, but the, the main village is Ravensworth down in the valley below. Um, I'm just seeing if I can see the, if we can see the castle from here. Um, yes, there's the castle. You know, perhaps you can see Ravensworth Castle right in the middle there. Just the, the keep of the castle and then the hills, and Scotland is that way. So these castles, of course, are defensive, and the castle in the valley, the church on the hill. The castle has quite, well, had quite extensive moats. It has quite extensive moats. Obviously, it's in ruins now. It's been quite a while. Um, north side of the church, yes, it is raining a bit, but only a little bit. And, and uh, memorials. Um, so John Porter of uh, Waitgate in the township of uh, uh, Gales to part of his life, March 11th, 1866, 65 years. So in these very, very traditional memorials, you can see the table tomb, that's a high status tomb, somebody important is buried here. And the, actually the castle passes out of use after the Middle Ages. Um, this is John Thompson of Dalton, Dalton is a, again a nearby township. It has a church now. I you know, try to do a video of it, but we'll see if it's open. I'm here before there, if you know what I mean. So here we are, and on a, a bit of a damp spring afternoon. It's a bit, a bit changeable, but this is. Uh, you can see here, and if John Wycliffe ever came here, would have looked up at the tower, and his brother. Was here, and I said, because John Wycliffe is a is a, a priest and is a connection, is quite well connected with his family. He quite probably would have visited. And here we have a an older grave, older memorial. And see if it it looks 18th century. It's a hand clasping a book. Um, hard to tell. And there's Timothy Gibbon, 1880 and 1861. That's the old pub. You again these villages. You it still is a pub actually. So. Um, these villages often find the inn and the church next to each other, just because it's convenient. And here we have the old schoolhouse. Um, and I suppose there's also there is a. Um, that is interesting. Here we are. Um, Jane, also in memory of Jane, of Anne Jane and Joseph, who died in their infancy. And yet, also after whom? Obviously, this is father is expecting to be at the top there and he's not. He really must have remarried and moved away or something. You can see the little square here. Um, but that is the old the old um, hospital it would have been called. Uh, hospital and hospitium place where people stayed. Also it's a school, it's the grammar school. There, medieval grammar school. Pretty interesting building extended in the 18th century. So that it's most of the outside here at that's most of uh, Kirby or Kirkby Ravensworth, known as Kirkby Hill here. And so there we have it, Kirkby Hill, Kirkby Ravensworth, call it what you like. Both options are okay. Kirkby Ravensworth, of course, church by Ravensworth. Kirkby Hill, the church on the hill. So thank you for watching. It's, it's an interesting church with its Wycliffe connection with the last of the Wycliffe's buried here. So thank you for watching.
and may God bless you and keep you until next time.